it's Saren, and today we're going to be talking about subatomic particles. So there are three subatomic particles you need to worry about. They are neutrons, electrons, and protons. And each has unique characteristics. But first, why do they matter? So, <laughs> that's kind of a funny chemistry joke if you understand why do they matter. Because they matter because elements and atoms make up these cool things. Atoms make up matter, such as your mom's wedding ring, which probably has a gold band, which is an element. Gold is the element AU on the periodic table. Subatomic particles make up atoms, and atoms make up matter, such as gold. So that's why they matter. First, we're going to talk about an atom and how these subatomic particles fit into this idea of an atom. So what I'm drawing here is just a Bohr model. A Bohr model. And a Bohr model is just an early idea of what an atom might look like. So it has all these fun rings, it looks like a planet, and then it also has this thing called a nucleus. And the nucleus is where protons and neutrons hang out. Protons and neutrons hang out in the nucleus. So where are the electrons? Well, the electrons hang out out here around the nucleus. Electrons. And Bohr's model isn't completely right because electrons don't orbit the nucleus in defined patterns such as planets but but so what makes protons difference from neutrons difference from electrons um so protons we'll start with protons protons are positively charged protons do not participate in bonding but they are very important as far as balancing charge and they also define an element So an element is defined by the number of protons it has. So let's say carbon. Carbon has 12 protons and neutrons in its nucleus normally. Normally carbon has 12 protons and neutrons in its nucleus. Six of those are protons and this number right here, six, defines the element carbon. If it doesn't have six protons, then it's not carbon. Next we have neutrons. So neutrons are, you guessed it, neutral. Neutrons are neutral. Um, they are also found in the nucleus. Side note, nucleus, um, very similar to in a cell, how you have a nucleus if you're a biology person. This is the nucleus of the cell with its DNA and chromatin in it. Um, not the same thing, though. The nucleus of the cell is not the same as the nucleus of an atom. Just a very cool comparison if you are more of a biology person. Neutrons, though, if the number of neutrons changes, then you get a, what's called an isotope. And we'll talk more about what isotopes are, but that's just something that you might want to think about. Neutrons, um, they don't participate in bonding either. So neutrons do not participate in bonding. Electrons, though, are super important. So electrons do participate in bonding. Do participate in bonding. Electrons participate in bonding. It's very true. So, they do participate in bonding and they have a negative charge. All right. Negative charge. Sometimes you'll see electrons written as this type of thing, which is totally fine. That's how I usually write them when I'm trying to shorthand an electron. So that's another way you can think about it. Um, 
It's very crucial, though, that you know that electrons are the subatomic particles that participate in bonding. Super important. Okay, now we're going to move on a little bit to elemental symbols. So you guys have probably seen this before, this fun thing with the carbon, and then it's got its 12.0107, and then it's got that 6 up there. So that's the elemental symbol of a carbon. Um, and so just to point out some key things here. So this number right up here is the number of protons. And then this number down here is the mass number and is the number of protons and neutrons. Here, the six is also called the atomic number because it defines what atom it is. Um, so some key ideas, when you gain or lose neutrons, as I said before, you create an isotope. When you gain or lose electrons, you create an ion. So it's very important you know the difference between an isotope and an ion. You may also see some shorthand like this. I drew this on the previous slide. So same kind of thing. This is the element symbol In the previous drawing I drew up in the left-hand corner up there, um, that is the same six as the number of protons here in this diagram as the six. So the sixes in both of these diagrams are the same. Also, this 12 right here is also the mass number, which is again, protons and neutrons. So these are just two ways of drawing the same thing, um, same element symbol, same number of mass numbers of protons and neutrons. Um, the key thing to remember with this in the element symbol on the periodic table, this is an average of all the isotopes um, found naturally. So out of all the elements in the atoms, out of all the atoms of carbon found in nature, um, most of them will have a atomic mass of um, 12. So that's just an average. You can also have, like I said, isotopes with mass numbers of 13, 14, um, 11. That's all that I want to talk about today. Just a quick review. So the things we learned about today are called subatomic particles right here. These subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, make up matter like gold. Protons, neutrons, and electrons are found in an atom. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of the atom, while electrons are found in the space around the nucleus. Um, protons are positively charged. They are found in the nucleus, and they define what an element is. So very important that you know what protons are, and in the elemental symbol, where to find protons, or the number that represents the number of protons. Neutrons are found in the nucleus as well, but they are neutral. Neutrons contribute to the overall mass, which is why they're included in the mass number. Also, electrons are super important. Electrons participate in bonding, which is a key concept that you need to know. Electrons participate in bonding and they have a negative charge. Then we talked a little bit about the elemental symbols and how there are a couple different ways you can draw them. Then we talked about what uh, isotope is, which is a change in the number of neutrons, either an addition of a neutron or a subtraction or a loss of a neutron. And then we also talked about what ions are, as in they are a loss or a gain of an electron. And that's all we have today. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful.